Hey, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have another budget-friendly meal plan for you this week. I spent about $60 at the grocery store and I'm gonna be making about seven dinner options and five to seven breakfast options, depending on your serving size. So let's head to the store and get shopping. Okay, here is my list. I'm gonna to try to keep it under $70 today. So let's get shopping. The first thing I wanna look at are the eggs and milk. Some people have asked, why do I go to the eggs and milk first? Sometimes they are sold out of the eggs. They're $1.29 a dozen. I'm gonna get two dozen today. Next, I'll get some milk. The 2% is $3.12 for the gallon. So that's what I'll get today. Next, I'll get some Greek yogurt for $3.49. Next, I need to get some chicken leg quarters. I wanna stay around $8 for these today. Okay, this package is almost four pounds. We're gonna pay $4.46 and this one is $4.71. This is definitely the best bang for your buck. This is $1.19 a pound and you can also use the bones and skin for broth, which is what we're gonna do this week. Although whole chickens are $1.19 a pound, that's a really great deal right now. So either or, um, really you get a little bit more meat if you're doing the chicken leg quarters, but if whole chickens around that price, maybe 99 cents a pound, that would be really great too. I am gonna be using about two and a half cups of flour this week, maybe a little bit more. It's 235 for five pounds. I'm actually just using it from the pantry, but if you need it for this meal plan, go ahead and grab it now. Next, I'll get some instant fast acting yeast for 79 cents, it comes with three. Next, I'll get this 32 ounce bag of great white northern beans for $2.49, it's a really great value. Then I'll get one can of chopped chilies for 68 cents. And I am going to be using a lot of seasonings from my pantry this week, but if you need some seasonings at a really great price, these are 89 cents and they come in a bag like this and you get an entire ounce or a little bit less than an ounce, depending on what it is. This one even has two ounces, the sesame seeds, and they have all kinds of different ones. These are in pretty much all grocery stores, sometimes just in the um, Hispanic aisle or, you know, where you can find some of the Mexican foods and things like that. So take a look in your store. This could save you a lot of money. You're just not paying for the plastic packaging like you can see here like these plastic containers these ones it's 99 cents and you only get a quarter of an ounce just make sure you double check the prices this is 2.1 ounces of paprika for 99 cents and this is one ounce of paprika for 89 cents so really just depends on what it is but just double check the prices and see where the best deal is for you Next, I'm getting four ounces of crumbled goat cheese for $2.39. Looks like they have a couple different flavors too, so you could get tomato basil. I'm just gonna get original today. Next, I'll be getting a pound of sharp cheddar cheese for $3.79. Now I'll get a container of old-fashioned rolled oats for $3.89, and this is um, two pounds and 10 ounces. I honestly think you're gonna be really surprised with what I do with this this week. Now I need one can of tomato paste and on to the produce next. I'm going to get a three pound bag of sweet potatoes for $3.87. Then I will get some ginger and I'll see if they have any garlic, but I do need both this week. It's a dollar and 78 cents for eight ounces of ginger and it'll be a dollar 77 for the three pack of garlic. I just need two tomatoes this week. It's 84 cents a pound. Let's just get one more for good measure. Then I need bananas for 45 cents a pound. Next, I need about four limes. The limes were 15 cents each. Next, I need to get some white onions. They're 29 cents a pound this week. Then I need three avocados. They're 69 cents each. If I can't find the garlic, I'm gonna buy this already peeled garlic for 317. This is only six ounces though, so it's definitely a lot more um, you know, costly, but I will be using all of this um, this week for some fun things too, since I have to buy so much of it. Next, I'll be getting two pounds of carrots for $1.49. Next, I'll be getting some mushrooms. The already sliced mushrooms are actually a little bit cheaper at $1.69 versus the whole mushrooms at 207. So I'll go ahead and get these sliced mushrooms today. Next, I'll get this organic kale for $3.56. They don't have any other kale here, um, so this is what I have to work with today. Then I do need a bag of spinach for $1.39. This one looks really good. 
Now I'm not seeing green onions today and sometimes that happens that Aldi will run out of something. So if you um, can pick up some green onions, I do have some in my garden. They only cost less than a dollar or so, so you can add that in pretty easily in the budget. By the way, this looks really fun. This is cold foam. I heard they also have like a pumpkin spice one too. It's $4.79. We're not gonna be getting that today, but I just thought it was really fun. Next, I'll be getting some ground turkey for $2.65 a pound. Down here with the poultry. And then I'll be getting one bag of the frozen sweet corn for $1.15. The chicken is down below. Here's everything else. Let's go see what the total is. This is everything and we are paying $58.99 today. The first thing I'm going to do is make this no need bread. I've shared this recipe a couple times before because it's just so easy and it's great to have as a side with a lot of dishes. So first I'm just going to combine flour, salt, and instant yeast in a large bowl. I'll mix that till it's really well combined and then I'm going to add honey, although you could use sugar or any sweetener that you like, and then the warm water and this water is somewhere between 105 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I'm just going to mix that all up and until it's nice and combined until I can't really see any more flour streaks left and then it's just going to resemble sort of a shaggy dough and I'll cover that with plastic wrap or a reusable wrap like this and let it sit for about an hour until it doubles in size once it doubles in size it'll look something like this and then I'm just going to turn it out onto a well floured surface now I'm not going to need this but I do need to fold in the sides I'm just going to fold over the four sides until it resembles sort of a loaf shape and then I'll turn it upside down onto a piece of parchment paper and lightly flour it and cover it with my reusable wrap again while I preheat the oven. Now I'm putting in my Dutch oven first into a cold oven with the lid and just make sure that your Dutch oven is safe with the lid up to the temperature that you're going to be baking at and I'm going to set that to 425 degrees. Once it's preheated I'm just going to take off the lid and I'm going to carefully put in the dough with the parchment paper and then cover it again with the lid and I'm just going to bake this at 425 degrees for about 30 minutes. After the 30 minutes, I'm just gonna carefully remove the lid and continue baking for about 10 to 15 minutes. I find that 10 minutes is the perfect amount of crunch for us on the crust, but if you like a more crunchy crust, you can definitely leave it in there for up to 20 minutes, just depending again on how crunchy you like that outside layer there and that's it it's super easy just make sure that you let this cool for at least 20 to 30 minutes on a cooling rack before you slice into it just to make sure that it finishes cooking all the way through the next bit of prep that I'd like to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and cut all of the onions I'm just going to dice all the onions because I'm going to be using them all diced in the recipes for the week now onions can last in the refrigerator for up to five days once they're chopped and you can just put them in the freezer if you're not going to use them within five days and you can use them straight from the freezer and don't forget to save the skins you can use that when you make your chicken stock or a veggie stock later next I'm gonna be roasting my chicken leg quarters so first I'm just going to unwrap all of my chicken and blot them dry with a paper towel this just helps the seasoning stick a little bit so it's totally up to you if you'd like to do that then I'm just gonna drizzle them with some oil any oil that you have on hand will do I think I'm using avocado oil here but you can use olive oil or vegetable oil whatever you have or no oil it's totally fine then and I'm just going to season all over with some salt, pepper, garlic powder, and paprika. These are just my favorite seasonings for chicken. You can certainly add or omit any seasonings that you like. So just select any seasonings that your family loves and go with that. Even just a simple salt and pepper, if that's all you have on hand, that will do just fine too. Now after everything is seasoned, I'm going to put these in the oven at 425 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes or until the chicken is 165 degrees Fahrenheit internally. Just make sure you use a thermometer to check that. That. and before I shred it I'm just gonna let them rest for about 10 minutes to make sure they stay nice and juicy and of course I'm gonna save the drippings too so I can use that in cooking later and I end up with quite a few cups of chicken here for the entire week so we're gonna have plenty to work with and don't forget to save the bones and the skin for stock later next I'm gonna be cooking up about half of those northern white beans so I can have them to use in dishes for the week as well so I'm just going to soak these overnight but first I need to pick them over and make sure all the bad beans and any rocks or anything that's in there are just removed and then I'm going to give it a good rinse. Then I just add the rinsed beans to a large bowl and cover them with about six to eight cups of water and just leave that covered on the counter overnight or at least eight hours. Now there is a fast way to do that too. If you don't 
don't have the time to wait overnight, all you have to do is add your beans and your water to a pot, bring it to a boil, cover it and turn off the heat and just let it sit for at least an hour to an hour and a half and then they're ready to go. Once the beans are soaked, I'm gonna strain them and then set them aside and in the meantime, I'm gonna heat some oil and saute my onions and garlic in a large pot until everything's nice and soft and translucent. Then I'll add my strained beans to the pot and add about six to eight cups of water. Now I'm adding a little bit of chicken drippings from that chicken we cooked. I'm just doing about four tablespoons, but it's up to you how much you'd like to add. This is gonna add a ton of flavor. Then a little bit more water just to make sure everything is covered about two to three inches above the beans. And I'm gonna season it with salt and bring that to a boil. As it's boiling, this foam is going to show up on the top. Just skim that off and discard it and then continue to boil. I like to cover them and let them go ahead and simmer for about 60 minutes and then take the lid off and simmer them for an additional 30 minutes to 45 minutes until they're nice and soft. And I'm just gonna smash the garlic and mix that all together and that's it for the beans. It's very simple and it doesn't take long at all. Next, I'm gonna be putting together some oatmeal breakfast bars for easy grab and go breakfast for the week. So first, in a large bowl, I'm gonna combine two cups of rolled oats, half a cup of sugar, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of cinnamon sugar, or if you have cinnamon, that works too, and half a teaspoon of salt. Mixing that all together till it's combined and then in a separate bowl, I'm mixing together two eggs, half a cup of milk, and a quarter cup of applesauce. But if you don't have applesauce, you can use oil or butter or even yogurt. Then I'll also add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. If you make your own extract, you may wanna use a little bit less. I used about a half of a teaspoon, but if you're just using the stuff from the store, one teaspoon is good. Then mix together the dry ingredients with the wet ingredients until completely combined. And then we're just gonna set this aside for about 20 minutes to let it set. This step is important because it keeps the bars together after we bake them instead of having them fall apart. Now I did try this with two different types of recipes. I did one with regular sugar and one with brown sugar, and I actually prefer the one with brown sugar better. It just has a better chew. So I'm just showing you the two different recipes here that I used, and it's totally up to you which one that you use. I have both options in the ingredients and the instructions, so you can see both of those in the blog post. While those are sitting for 20 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm going to line a baking sheet with parchment paper. This just makes it easier to remove later on, but if you don't have parchment, you can just grease the casserole dish. I used a six by nine casserole dish here. An eight by eight dish would also work really well. And I did have an eight by 11 casserole dish that I modified by just putting a little bit of foil in one end to just eliminate those three inches so I could make it more of an eight by eight. It's just a little bit better chew on the bars because they're a little bit thicker, but you could use any size that you have. Just double check that they're cooked all the way through before removing them. I just baked it for about 30 to 35 minutes until the edges were golden brown and I just made sure I cooled it for at least five minutes before I sliced it and I did 16 slices but you could do whatever size that you like and I think that two pieces would be a good serving size so I made this twice for 16 servings total so it was 32 pieces. Next I made some overnight oats for another easy grab-and-go breakfast. I like to make these in individual jars so we can just grab one at a time. In each jar I put half a cup of oats, quarter cup of Greek yogurt, half a cup of milk, a tablespoon of honey or maple syrup and a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract which is optional if you have chia seeds you can also add that just put it in the refrigerator overnight and then add your toppings the next morning this first dinner idea is going to surprise you it's a corn and egg oatmeal and if you've never tried savory oatmeal don't knock it till you try it i promise these are going to be really good so first in a medium pot i'm just going to combine the water oats soy sauce and sriracha i'm going to bring it to a simmer and cook for about four minutes stirring occasionally then meanwhile i'm going to heat some oil or butter in a large pan over medium heat, crack the eggs into the pan and fry those on one side and then fry on the other side. And back to our oatmeal, I'm going to add some corn and green onions, cook that for an additional two to three minutes, then top the egg on top and serve it. It is so, so good. You've got to try this one. You can also put more hot sauce on top, some sesame seeds, really make it your own. This next dinner idea is going to be using the rest of our white beans that we have not cooked yet. It's a very simple dish. We're just going to start by peeling our ginger. If you've never worked with ginger before, it's really easy to peel just with a spoon like I'm showing you here and then I'm just going to mince it and set it aside and in a medium pot I'm going to heat some oil over medium heat add the onions and saute until they're soft and translucent it takes about three or four minutes then I'm going to add our soaked overnight picked over rinsed and drained beans and the garlic the ginger diced tomatoes turmeric paprika parsley salt and some chicken stock or water with dripping
things added. Then I'm just going to stir that all together and bring it to a boil. Then I'll reduce the heat, cover, and simmer for about 60 minutes. Then I'm going to uncover it and continue to cook it for about 30 to 45 minutes or until the beans are nice and soft. Now in the meantime, I'm going to be making some dressing for the salad to go with this. I'm just going to stir together some olive oil, balsamic vinegar, a little bit of honey, Dijon, and some salt and pepper. Very, very simple. I'm just going to shake it up and set this aside while I finish putting everything else together. For the salad, all I'm going to be doing this time is putting some spinach, carrots that I've shredded, and a diced tomato, and just going to separate that equally on all the plates and then top it with the dressing. It's very, very easy, very simple salad. You can definitely zhuzh this up any way that you like, add some seasonings to. It really is delicious just like that. Once the beans are all cooked through, I'm just going to serve that in bowls with lots of toasted bread, and I recommend putting the beans on the bread. It is really delicious and a very simple meal. Next, I'm going to be making the really easy chicken broth to go in our white bean and chicken soup next. So first, I'm just going to take the bones and skin that we saved. I actually just put these in the freezer because I didn't know what night I was going to be making this. So I just take them straight from the freezer, put them in a large pot, cover completely with water, then just let that simmer and scoop off the foam. It's going to simmer on low, covered partially for about two Two hours at least and then after that we just take out the bones and then strain it and then we have our broth it's very very easy and next we're going to move on to making the white bean and chicken soup first in a large pot we're going to heat some oil over medium heat add the onions and the carrots and we're just going to saute those until they're soft about five minutes or so then I'm going to add some tomato paste I like to actually freeze my tomato paste make it nice and flat in the bag and then just put these little lines through it so they're about a tablespoon each because I'm always using about a tablespoon for my recipes so that's that's an easy tip for you to save all that tomato paste. I'm just going to add that with some cumin to the pot and continue cooking until the tomato paste gets a little darker, about one minute. Then I'll add my cooked chicken, garlic, ginger, and salt and saute until the garlic is fragrant, about one minute more or so. Then I'll stir in that chicken broth and some beans and bring to a simmer. Then I'll allow that to simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then I'm just going to add the kale. Now the kale is going to cook whichever way that you like it. If you like it more wilted or less wilted, this part's going to be up to you and will determine how long this dish actually takes. So once I had the kale, I just cooked that for about 10 to 15 minutes until it was the nice texture that I liked. It was really nice and wilted, but still had a little bit of a bite. After that, you're just going to turn off the heat, add a little bit of lime juice, and then serve it. Very, very simple dish. This comes together in about 30 minutes or so, and it's very delicious. Serve it with some bread if you have any on the side, and there you have it. Super fast and easy white bean and chicken soup. Next, we're going to kick things up a notch and make a white bean and chicken chili. This is absolutely delicious, especially with all of the toppings. So first, in a large pot, we're going to heat some oil or butter over medium heat. If you don't have oil or butter, just add a little bit of water. Then add onions and saute until soft and translucent. This takes about three or four minutes. Then add the garlic, paprika, chili powder, cumin, salt, and pepper. And we're going to saute that until it's fragrant. This is going to add a lot of flavor sauteing those seasonings because it's going to allow them to bloom and really add a nice deepness to our dish. Then we're going to stir in the beans, chicken, the green chilies, and some water or chicken stock, whatever you have on hand. Then we'll bring that to a boil, reduce the heat, and simmer for about 20 minutes or so. Then we're going to use the wooden spoon to smash some of the beans to create a little bit of a thicker sauce. Now that's totally optional. You can smash them or not smash them. It just depends on if you want a thicker sauce or not. After that, we'll add the corn and cook for an additional three to five minutes or until the corn is cooked through. Then add a little bit of lime juice and we're going to season with a little bit more salt and pepper to taste then just serve it up topped with some shredded cheese diced avocado greek yogurt and enjoy this next dinner idea is another savory oatmeal. This is mushroom and goat cheese oatmeal. It is really delicious and comes together super fast. So in a medium pot, we're going to melt some butter over medium heat, add the mushrooms and saute until soft and tender. Then we're going to season those mushrooms with salt and pepper. I highly recommend waiting to season the mushrooms with salt and pepper until after they've gotten a little bit more soft and some of that liquid has come out. Really makes a difference in the flavor. After that, we'll add some garlic and saute for one minute more or until fragrant. Then we're going to stir in our oats, the chicken broth, and some chili flakes. Now, if you don't like spice, definitely just leave those red chili flakes out. But if you do like a little bit of spice, just add a tiny bit. It really adds a lot of dimension to this dish, and I think you'd really love it. Then just continue to season that with salt and pepper and more chili flakes. Bring that to a boil. Cook for five minutes, stirring occasionally. Then we're going to stir in our spinach and cook until it's wilted. After it's wilted, after just a couple minutes, we're going to serve it in bowls topped with goat cheese and more chili flakes if desired. 
desired. I forgot the spinach at first, that's why it looks like that. Next, we're going to be making a turkey and sweet potato casserole. Again, this one comes together really fast too. In a large pan, we're gonna heat some oil or butter over medium heat, then add our diced onions and saute until soft and translucent. Again, that's just three to four minutes. Then we'll add the ground turkey and saute, breaking apart as it cooks until it's fully cooked through. And then we're gonna season this with salt and pepper to taste really well on both sides as we cook it. Feel free to add any additional spices that you love. I just kept it simple and just did salt and pepper. After that, we're just gonna add our sweet potatoes, stir and season those with salt and pepper as well. Then we're just gonna cover it, reduce the heat to low and cook for about 15 minutes or until the sweet potatoes are soft and tender. I recommend stirring this about 10 minutes in just to make sure those sweet potatoes aren't sticking. Then we're gonna add our chopped kale or you can use spinach, whichever you prefer in this case and whatever you have on hand that's left over. Then cover it and continue to cook for three to five minutes or until the kale is wilted to your liking. Again, it's really gonna depend on how you like your kale cooked. If you like it more wilted, it's gonna take a little bit longer. So just make sure you taste it and cook it the way that you like it. Then stir and top with some goat cheese and serve immediately. This is so, so good. It's very simple. So you wouldn't think it has a ton of flavor, but it actually really does. Now, if you don't like goat cheese, you could use feta instead or any other cheese that you like. If you end up trying this one, let me know down below in the comments because it was one of my absolute favorites. This last dinner option is another savory oatmeal. This is a cheesy oats and sweet potato hash. First, in a large pan, I'm gonna heat some oil over medium heat and add my sweet potatoes. Then I'll season those with salt and pepper, stir, cover, reduce the heat, and allow to cook for 10 minutes. And again, I'm gonna stir after 10 minutes and then cover again and cook for an additional five minutes or until those sweet potatoes are cooked through to my liking. Meanwhile, in a medium pot, I'm gonna melt some butter or oil over medium heat, add my onions and garlic and saute until soft and translucent, about three to four minutes again. Then we're gonna be adding our oats and stir. I'm gonna cook those oats just like that for one minute to sort of toast them, season with salt and pepper. Then I'm going to add my milk, chicken broth and stir and bring to a boil and cook for about five minutes. Then I'll turn off the heat and stir in that cheddar cheese until it's nice and melted. Then I'm just gonna serve that in bowls topped with my sweet potato hash and some diced avocado. You can really add any toppings that you like to this one, maybe a boiled egg or the sky is the limit really with this one. These cheesy oats are so versatile and so delicious. I really hope that you try them. I hope you enjoyed those recipes and at least got some ideas for things to make for your family this week. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to see more. I have a lot more budget-friendly meal plans coming soon and I have some more on my channel if you'd like to check those out. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me.